Now he was prepared for the inevitable. He was a 4.7 Jeep owner, so he did carry a can of home style baked beans at all times. You've got to have that baby ready. What's going on guys and welcome to today's video and today we are here with my buddy Jesse that you guys uh, know he's got the silver Overland WJ and uh, we're out here rescuing another WJ because that's what you got to do. You got to keep these poor old things you know out of the salvage yard. So this one is not for me. This one is for Jesse. He found this thing. Long story but we are uh, not at his shop, not at my shop, but we are going to be attempting to drag this thing out of this back lot of a independent shop, get it loaded and uh, hopefully get it back to his house. Now it is rain for like three days. So we're out five here in the rain. Like yeah, like five inches of rain for the last three days. So we're out here in the rain saving WJs because you, you gotta save them all. All right, guys, so here is the Jeep in question. It is sitting very sadly in uh this independent shops back lot because the guy wanted it repaired and then backed out so that's where it sits currently does not start but it's honestly in pretty nice condition so we'll do a quick walk around out here in the rain while we are airing tires up so guys as you can see we've got a grand cherokee limited i don't even know what year this thing is offhand but it is 47 powered and that's why it is sitting here. Uh, as you guys can see, we've got all the Milwaukee compressors out running, airing up tires. Um, but no, it's, it's in really nice shape. It's again, kind of one of those that's worth saving. Um, and, and that's why we're out here. So, you know, obviously leather interior on this thing. You know, leather interior that is honestly in pretty nice shape. The seats are not destroyed. It's It just needs cleaned up and to get all of the trash out of the vehicle. But again, body wise, it's not been crashed. It's not been dinged up. It's just a nice Jeep. And that's what Jesse and I have kind of been doing here lately. It seems like we've been saving the dub jays that that at least need another second chance at life no we can't keep all of them but maybe we can get them back on the road and get them moving again so we are going to get this thing loaded we've got jesse's jeep here with a tow strap because i do not have a winch on my trailer so we are going to be tow strapping the jeep onto the trailer with his jeep pulling it i've done this thing one time before with a very lightweight small car never with a kind of heavier vehicle so it'll be interesting and the trailer deck is completely wet from the rain and the roads are wet so it, it, nothing will go wrong well guys we're starting our journey here just getting it towed off of their back lot and uh probably yeah you can see we've got jesse uh with the tow strap with a wj pulling the broken wj um out of the lot here so we've got transfer case thrown in neutral We've got the tires are all, all aired up and we'll hope this thing will uh, drag itself. Yeah, we're, we've got 47HO power pulling us here out of the back lot. Um, I'm gonna try to steer with one hand and not crash into all of their uh, customer lot cars here on the lot. Oh yeah, we've got a very nice steering wheel cover. We've got a Budweiser sticker on the dash, which is always nice. And we are, we are uh, on our way. Now, if you guys stick around till the end of this video, obviously we're just gonna get this thing loaded up right now, um, and then we will get it dropped off over at Jesse's house. But when we get to Jesse's house, I wanna show you guys his like very cool collection of weird, rare GM old cars and modern stuff. It's, it's pretty cool, rare GM stuff that you might not have seen before. So, but yeah, first things first, we need to get this thing loaded up on the trailer.
realized it didn't even fall off the trailer and we pulled it on <laughs> relatively seamlessly like we knew what we were doing. I mean, I don't know. It just works relatively well. Well guys, we're all loaded up here. We've got the Jeep strapped on the trailer. Um, next thing, we're gonna be out at Jesse's house unloading. And like I said, we'll look at his very unique collection of GM vehicles since we aren't really gonna be able to do anything with this today. We'll, we'll definitely walk around it, show you the options. And then, like I said, we'll look at Jesse's very cool, unique GM car collection. Well guys, we got the Jeep safely to Jesse's house here, and it's going to be living in the driveway since he has a lot of projects inside, but uh, the, uh, the Jeep here in the driveway, like I said, and we'll quickly look at uh, what brought it here, which is, of course, it having a 4.7, and of course, something devastating happening because if we look underneath, um, it's, it's had a really bad thing happen. Uh, yeah, you guys won't be able to see, but uh, there is a connecting rod very forward on the oil pan that is hanging down through the bottom of the pan. Now, one benefit of that is the fact that it did a anti-rust treatment on the trailer all the way here. So the trailer will literally never rust. So thank you, Jesse, for that. That's, you know, a, a benefit of trailering a oil pan with a window in it but that that condones the diagnosis here on the 47 it's going to need an engine so what you'll eventually see us um, we'll probably be out at the salvage yard pulling a 47 out of a Jeep and uh, doing it on our backs and in the dirt and that's that's probably what we'll be doing for this thing to be able to get it up and going um, but what I thought we would do is do a little kind of walk around and then we'll look inside of this because there's some weird stuff in there so 01 grand cherokee limited um and honestly yeah 01 um now honestly it is in really nice shape there is no big huge rust holes in it um the you know it's it's in good shape for what it is um you know as we walk around this thing it's the, the bumper's all there, everything's there. So it's kind of one of those that you hate to see just get destroyed and thrown into a salvage yard. And that's why it ends up in mine or Jesse's hands is because we've got to save all the WJs. Now this one does have Quadra Drive, which if you guys don't know, is the cool limited slip or basically factory lockers in the axles. Um, and you can always quickly tell a quarter drive Jeep with the badge. Now this one does have the black kind of lettering that has worn off, but that's kind of your quick glance is a quarter drive Jeep will have that badge back there under the Jeep. Um, and again, kind of ish works like a Rubicon where you've got front and rear factory basically locking axles. Now, yes, the clutches get worn out and they get a little less effective as they get older, but it's a pretty cool factory thing for a grocery getter soccer mom Jeep of the day. Now this one is, like I said, a limited. We've got infinity gold, we've got memory seats, we've got leather seats, and like I said earlier, the leather seats are not torn up. They just need cleaned up and it will look really, really nice inside. Um, headliners in good shape, sunroof that isn't, you know, fallen down or broken. Um, it's, it's just kind of all there. Uh, now the steering wheel does have a cover, which kind of makes you a little concerned about what the leather looks like. And yeah, if we look, the, the leather has pretty much come apart. Um, they get really soft and mushy and then people throw steering wheel covers and that's normally how you find these things. Now, one thing cool, this does have the one year only 2001 limited gauges which are the white face i don't know they're they're pretty cool i threw a set in my 99 laredo this does have auto temp air so it's guaranteed to have at least two broken doors whether it be the temp doors or the research door one of the doors will be broken it is a guarantee that you get with every auto temp jeep this one does have the factory tin disc changer there in the back with the tape and CD player. It does not have RB1, but still kind of cool with, <laughs> with the factory um, tin disc. Now, Jesse does have like a massive collection of RB1 radio. So this, this will get an RB1 probably before it even gets a motor because that's what we got to do is do ridiculous factory accessories long before fruit. <laughs> yeah yeah you know the motor's a very small thing 
RB1 install, obviously priority. Now, one thing kind of cool is the factory spare. This thing has never even seen daylight. The nubs are still on the tire. The tire still has the blue on the letters. I don't know, pretty cool seeing something that has never seen the ground or daylight or anything. So kind of a cool little, uh, little extra there. So now that we've kind of looked at all of the cool factory stuff, we'll look at some of the ridiculous stuff that is in this Jeep. Um, you, of course, need to carry your welding helmet. Uh, and one thing Jesse and I noticed was, you know, this very unassuming ratchet, but it has three eighths and quarter. I, I guess I have never seen that <laughs> contraption, but it's very nice. But when you lose your ratchet, you lose your quarter inch ratchet also. Um, we, we've got some... Anybody knows what those what, are. What, what is this, guys? I guess this kid was in welding school. Is this some sort of like welding school project thing? I, there's four of them. You can play a really miniature pony horseshoes, maybe. I, I'm not sure, but they're, they were up on the dash. So um, we've got welding rod. We've got lipstick. Um, you, you've just, you've got some gloves, more welding rod. You, of course, need your Nesquik here in the back. grams of protein. If, um, you, you do have the 10 disc with it still in the Jeep. Now, if we uh, move forward here, we've, we've got more. But wait, there's more, guys. We do have antifreeze on the floor. Some Casey's branded because, you know, you want to go and get pizza and antifreeze at the same place. We've got some pins oil. You've got to respect him for running some pins oil. Now, this is where it uh, it gets questionable. Um, we've got a... Uh, I'm, oh, oh we've got disposable yeah. masks, so he, he's COVID a free. COVID free guy. Now, we have a flashlight, which, you know, still works. Good for that. But what that gets us into is the spicy chicken. Now, did the spicy chicken happen at Casey's where he bought the antifreeze? Did he just... You know, did he buy it and the motor blew up? We just don't know, and I'm worried we'll never know, guys. Now, he was prepared for the <laughs> inevitable. He was a 4.7 Jeep owner, so he did carry a can of home-style baked beans at all times. You've got to have that baby ready, because if you guys are Jeep owners, you know 4.7s are very fragile. They can explode at literally any time. You've got to have chicken, you've got to have baked beans, and you're ready, and up here, you've got a emotional support <laughs> rabbit because again, your Jeep is going to explode at some point. You do need the teddy bear, or in this case, a rabbit when you are sleeping on the side of the road. It's just a little companion. Now, again, when you are broken on the side of the road, you do have your Little Trees air freshener smelling nice. That's, that's a good thing. You've got the home trash can set up with more Nesquik. I don't dare look in there, but um, we're just gonna close that. Let's get the old seat up. We'll, we'll get the fine. seat up here. And uh, he, he did, more gloves. Yeah, Guy did not like his hands being cold. We've got up. some old Subway, Subway wrapper. Yeah. Um, Oh, DeWalt. the guy was a DeWalt guy, not a Milwaukee guy. Gosh, that's that. that's unfortunate. Hey, here's our Infinity Gold sound amplifier. Angle grinder. Now again, guys, kind of just it just questions me. I don't judge. We don't judge here on the channel, but we do have some women's deodorant with our lip gloss for our welder. I don't know. It's it, it makes me wonder. Um, some organic hydration core water. Uh, what is that? Oh, this is a powered window defroster, 12 volt window defroster. That is, that well, is an when your doors are broken and you have no defrost. That is true. Jesse brought up a good point. The, the doors are definitely probably broken in this. You do not have defrost. You plug in your 12 volt window <laughs> defroster. That is, that is a quality piece of machinery. I'm sure it's got a lot of power. 12 volts, 15 amp max. And when you're broken on the side of the road, you can blow dry your hair with that thing. And guys, other than that in the back here, we're just looking at a bunch of trash, unfortunately. 
Oh boy. Small, now guys, on this side, we do have more subway. We have a heck of a Stanley roofing hammer. It's not a bad hammer That's, there. Jesse's pretty excited about yeah, the Stanley yeah. hammer. He's going to be, you know, needing to build more garage space yeah, here shortly. Um, again, here's more welding stuff. We've got our welding academy. If anybody's been to Heartland Welding Academy, you may know this guy. Um, ooh, that's, that's, I don't personal. know. <laughs> personal information. We don't want to dox this guy, guys. Um, more welding stuff. Now we do have a piece of pipe. Is this for security when you're broken on the side of the road? I have no idea. Oh boy, I'm oh, worried is this is, this pizza? is some pizza here, that's guys. It. Yeah, he yeah. left just a little crust, just a ration to keep you going. Um, lots of french fries. Oh my heavens. Hey, we got some beats. Uh, we've got The Game, the documentary. Got to have that. Got the Dayton wire wheels looking real fresh there. Um, oh my goodness. Oh, that's a two-disc set. This is the Notorious... B.I.G. Life After Death. Gosh, how many discs is this? This is a, like a four disc setup. Oh, no, Jesse called it. It is a two disc. Real let down. Um, hey, one thing that's always cool nice. when you uh, buy a used vehicle is the factory owner's manual is in it. That's that's a pretty neat find. Uh, more insurance stuff. Uh, so that's, that's it. We've got a little drink here. Um, a stress a stress ball, stress ball or is that a seven. racket ball something because you're gonna be very stressed in your 47 jeep and guys kind of last but not least we've got the budweiser sticker because you gotta because you're gonna need some alcohol when you're broken on the side of the road and Budweiser edition. guys i'm not oh, even sure even what this it. sticker is but it's it's something I'm afraid it, to google it it goes with oh we your got more over here 2018 yeah, we, we've got a lot. So guys, I think that's kind of all the all the goods here in the Jeep. Now, yes, we know it needs an engine, but it's kind of a good candidate. It's all there. It just needs cleaned up and uh, to made run again. Do you remember how many miles the thing had on it? No, it's been so long. Under 200? Yep, yeah, 150. 150-ish, somewhere, somewhere in there. So again, it's kind of where all of these things are at this point in their life, high 100s um again it's it's in good shape it's worth saving and that's what our mission here has been so guys i guess uh now that we've seen all that we need to see on the jeep i think the last thing to do is just kind of go through jesse's kind of cool and unique gm car collection or current ongoing projects and uh then we'll we'll call it a day here all right guys so like i said we will uh go kind of through his cool GM collection here and some of them are in project status right now in the middle of engine work or transmission work but they're all pretty cool so we will start out in the driveway and uh, we'll have Jesse here explaining some of the cool unique things now this is your daily driver right yeah. for the most part right now 1996 Monte Carlo Z34 the rust bucket it's uh, literally I got it for free. It was my sister's first car. It was old and broke down, and Dad said I could have it if I got it running again. But it's literally, there's rust holes up in the suspension. I had to fill with foam. It's rusting away, but it runs good. Gets good fuel economy. It is a Z34 with monochromatic, you know, paint and wheels. The white the, wheels, the, yeah, the big, big cool spoiler. duckbill spoiler yeah, it was here a NASCAR on the back. type spoiler because they ran Monte Carlo bodies in NASCAR back in the day. But but even regardless of it being a rusty car, it's still an extremely clean example of one that's still out on the road. It'd be the, damn nice if it wasn't for the rust. So yeah. now one thing that's kind of uh, uh maybe get some bad name or or is a little cumbersome is the engine these have the 3400 correct it's not called the 3400 was overhead back. okay this, this is the dual overhead four, cam yeah, the three four dual cam so they... as you guys can see you've got the intake manifold swept back completely covering the back it barely, cylinder you you can't really it even barely see fits in here overhead cam engines are just so much bigger than overhead valve engines but this is the normal gm 60 degree v6 the overhead valve engine. So they converted 
an overhead valve engine into a dual overhead cam. So I like to call it a five cam because you've got two cams on each head. Then there's like a dummy camshaft in the middle of the block. that's only function is to drive the oil pump. It's not really a camshaft because there's no lobes on it, but I still like to call it a camshaft. <laughs> But, a five cam. <laughs> but that's why he's able to drive one since he can work on it. And I think you've done head gaskets on. The head gaskets did go out like a year ago. So it, that's the thing. If you're able to be the mechanic working on it and you're very competent like Jesse is, then you can keep these things going and, and then be the very weird happy. The thing is being it's a converted overhead valve engine, it's got both a timing belt and a timing chain. Yeah, a timing belt and a timing chain because y you need both. Now guys, next up is a pretty special truck just because of what it is and for it being in your, is yeah. sentimental in the family. But it's a 1976 Chevy K10. My grandpa bought this in 1976. Uh, he bought it he had, he was a farmer and so it got used around the farm and he also had um, a construction business. They did dirt work, terrace building. And so it was out in the field. This was a work truck its whole life. So guys, this is the bicentennial package and the stars and stripes are how it would have come from yeah, they've the showroom. Done, and they weren't done very good in like the nineties. We're gonna redo it a little better, but uh, it did come with them. It was, a factory offered package back in 1976 to celebrate America's bicentennial. And it's been on there its whole life. Interior is immaculate on it. And that's one big thing on these square yeah. bodies is the dash, correct? That yeah. normally they are cracked they and are destroyed. Cracked. This is the original dash, not a single crack. Looks like new. Grandpa was a big believer in armor all and uh, I honestly think it must have worked because I've never seen a square body dash that nice. And didn't this sit in the barn when it wasn't being it used was, so it wasn't yeah. just baking in the sun? Yeah, I mean it got used. It was out during the day, but he you know being a farmer it sat in a implement you know tractor barn right so again one that was used but never abused never anyway. abused and always taken you care of trashed vehicle and people are like oh it's a work vehicle it's like I, I don't buy that if you take care of your stuff you know it's gonna last and you know grandpa he didn't abuse his stuff so guys now next to the truck is the is some watercraft um now, if you guys aren't into jet skis or watercraft, these are kind of legendary. This is a 96 Sea-Doo XP. Now these have the, um, a big powerful engine of the day, adjustable trim on the rear. Uh, they're, they're pretty cool machines. I have ridden these things in the past and they are very, very cool. They're a lot of fun. You can stand them up on tail. They're just a very extremely small, nimble machine compared to modern day massive, massive jet skis. And this one is running and driving. Um, he just recently purchased yeah, it and- got it. And he just had it on the water last weekend for the first time. So he, he, Jesse's been a very bad influence on me looking at jet skis also, but you guys know I don't. Commenters, you need to convince him to get a 2023 Sea-Doo <laughs> Spark. It's supposedly got 40 more horsepower for 2023. Right, so since my wife doesn't watch these videos, I'm, I'm safe to uh, say, but I, as you guys know, I have absolutely no garage space right now, but we may be doing some jet ski things in the future. So, but yes. Uh, XP, very cool, factory, fast, fun so machines. I haven't tested it out, but they supposedly, if it, well, it'll do almost 60 mile an hour stock. Yeah, they, for the mid 90s, that's pretty cool. Right, most modern day entry level jet skis are, are not doing those kind of speeds. So yeah. these are, these are very, very reputable machines, even still. Now the next weird, um, you know, trim level thing that you guys have probably never heard of. Now guys, they made these in 1989 and 90 and these are Pontiac Turbo Grand Prix. This is a factory turbocharged V6. And the kind of cool thing is they were turboed or, or modified by ASC McLaren. Yeah. Now this one is 
is taken apart right now. Um, it long is term project. long term project here. We've got it torn or Jesse has it torn down to the short block and is currently working on pulling the transmission because there is another one over there. Um, but yes, this long term plan is manual transmission and then you've got some top swap heads and intakes, yeah. correct? So the transmission the other turbo car transmission blew up this so this transmission is going in this one and the plan is to eventually put i've got a transit a five speed manual transmission but then this engine is going to get later 3100 heads in intakes which flow a lot better and i would like to put like a gt28 turbo on it it's already lowered on coil over so this will kind of the plan is for that one to kind of be the stock one and this one to be the modified faster funner one <laughs> and now one kind of cool thing which does the red one maybe have on the wastegate actuator uh there was a factory sticker that said not for not aircraft, for aircraft. Use, yeah, we go see it which we'll look at on the red car but i don't know pretty cool part that says not for aircraft use that's i don't know always thought that sticker was cool on these things but again, just cool, rare cars that you don't see, or if you do see, they surely aren't running. Now, yes, this one's not running, but it at least is in hands that can make it run. And uh, it, it's a clean example. The, the body's all there. It's not crumbling into the ground. So now stepping out of this garage into his second garage here, we are greeted with, again, a very rare GM car. Now, this is a carbon edition c6 z06 not a carbon package that you could option on to a normal c6 but this is one of the uh um, yeah it's a 2011 z06 carbon edition i think they made 252 of them yeah so this way under 300 cars yeah. ever built with the like i said this is the carbon edition not the carbon package or option yeah. so you know they had their unique black wheels now these got the zr1 rear spoiler um the really cool thing a lot of these parts are carbon fiber they're just painted carbon fiber on these cars it's like a zr1 but it is still the naturally aspirated ls7 um, the big carbon ceramic that, that brakes, is yeah. yeah the big massive carbon ceramic brakes it's a rotor is twenty five hundred dollars twenty five hundred dollar rotors um again it's it's a zr1 without the supercharger with jesse and i both really like the fact there's not a big huge hole in the hood yeah. we yeah. so again it's it's rarer than a zr1 since yeah. it is such a special unique thing another kind of cool this is the factory decal that came with these cars um it's again just a very cool kind of unique special thing on these carbon additions and fortunately or unfortunately the hood or the underside of the hood is the only exposed carbon fiber you can see on these things but Pretty cool when you open your hood and you've got full exposed carbon fiber. And again, guys, there's that LS7 there. Um, and Jesse does autocross this thing. It is sitting on our 888Rs front and rear and it grips extremely well and it, it does good things because it is obviously a Z06 and a slightly lighter weight Z06 at that. Now guys, here is a, another turbo. Um, like we said, this one is getting the transmission out of the black car and then this will be the stock um running vehicle that is the original oh, transmission a big hole in it that you know it didn't just go out it, uh, it it did very bad things obviously as you can see we've got a big massive hole but again this one is a you know very clean example again not rusting away And I've always thought one of the crazy things on these is just the massive amount of switches. You've got all of your radio controls here on the steering wheel. And one really cool thing is the factory air seats. Now this controls side bolsters and bottom bolsters. It, it does a ton of stuff and it is all air operated. Yeah. And guys, here's another kind of 
touch that lets you know that this thing is very 80s is those gold cross lace wheels and and again that was just the factory wheel for these turbo cars now guys last but not least is a, another long-term project here in jesse's garage but this is his monte carlo ss and yes there's quite a few ss's running around but the thing that to me makes this car very special or at least a little bit more unique is this is a factory aero coupe car now if you don't know what aero coupe is you're looking at it this is a factory piece of glass and a one piece of glass at that with these hard 90 degree almost edges and it makes it into that fast back NASCAR looking, you know, look and appearance. And we'll let Jesse kind of speak more on why that is a thing and kind of the rarity of these cars. Uh, I think they built 6,000, if I remember right, these aero coupes. But yeah, they did it for NASCAR back in the 80s. The bodies of the cars that they raced on the super speed is unlike today, were actually very close to the shape of the production ones. And in 1985, Ford came out with their new Thunderbird that was a lot more aerodynamic with this. And on the super speedways like Daytona and Talladega, they were faster than these Monte Carlos. So GM came up with this semi-fastback window that made the car more aerodynamic. And uh, they then began to clean up on the super speedways but it was an aerodynamic thing but in order to run it in nascar they had to build so many production versions and the minimum number nascar specified was 200 in 1986 they built 200 of these the minimum number required and then in 87 they built around 6,000. this is an 87 one of the 6,000. but yeah so it's technically like an obligation race car they uh, did this solely so they could run them in NASCAR. Now you, you, this was a high school car of yours, yeah, correct? Yeah, it wasn't my first car, but I was 17, I believe, when I got this. Uh, I was just sitting on a lot in a small town and was in rough shape. Dad and I restored it. Uh, a very clean, rust-free example. Like I said, the long-term project here, he's got engine out sitting here down to a short block on the stand and it's got some new parts some new heads and exhaust and stuff ready to go on it in the future yeah I'm kind of dumb for taking this apart it all started the uh, I, I used to autocross this believe it or not and after an autocross one time I noticed the fuel pump was leaking so I ordered a fuel pump for it and of course the uh, fuel line for it was all galled up and had to order a fuel line well the fuel line runs behind the water pump so I had to take the water pump off and the timing cover was leaking real bad so ordered a time I'm like oh, I'll do the timing cover too uh, but then it kind of is a part of the oil pan gasket so I did the oil so I ordered an oil pan gasket then realized you have to like lift the motor halfway out, believe it or not. They say these old cars are easy to work on, but you have to lift the motor halfway out to get the oil pan out. So I just decided, oh, I'm just gonna t rebuild the engine. And uh, years later, here it is. So, <laughs> so that's how a fuel pump becomes a, you know, engine out project. Right, so, so like I said, long-term project. And again, at least the car's inside a garage, yeah. protected from the elements not getting miles on it so yes it's a part and not on the road but at least it's in the best place it could possibly be so it eventually will move again but low priority that's it's not yeah first priority is this transmission then i'll probably move on to this so i ordered the parts i ordered i ordered edelbrock heads and intake and long tube headers just to you know probably a waste of money for a 305 what, what it might end up happening is I just order a 383 crate motor for it, to be perfectly honest. But so, we'll see. So, so one way or the other, it, it will uh, move again. Um, so guys, I, I know it's a longer video, but I wanted to show you all of Jesse's cool, rare, weird, low production number GM cars that are kind of hidden away here in his garage. and. You know, yes, we may not be showing all of the work here on the Jeep, but we'll, you'll probably see us ripping a motor out of a uh, salvage yard and 
hopefully this one moves again so i don't know if that that's our uh that that's our apparently our life's goal here is just to save the wjs um you guys know the white one that i've got that i believe is going away shortly we've got that 04 that is torn down to the short block i've got cylinder heads ready to go on it i just got all my gaskets so hopefully we will get that back together and see if the thing starts and I do have my eye on another one, believe it or not. I haven't even started pursuing it, but we may see if we can nab another one. But until then, guys, thanks for uh, coming along on another WJ rescue mission and checking out all of Jesse's cool, rare, weird cars. And guys, as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next time.